हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो इस वीडियो में हम एक छोटा सा गेम खेलेंगे सो थ्रू आउट दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एनालाइज अ कंपनी और अ स्टॉक एंड इट्स योर जॉब एज वी गो थ्रू द एनालिसिस टू गेस ए व्हाट इंडस्ट्री और व्हाट सेक्टर दिस स्टॉक इज फ्रॉम एंड बी वॉट इज द स्टॉक दैट वीर एक्चुअली टॉकिंग अबाउट कौन सी कंपनी के बारे में हम बात करें सो इट्स वेरी वेरी सिंपल बट आई थिंक दिस शुड बी अ लॉट ऑफ फन सो in front of your screen now you should be able to see the net profits of this company for the last 5 6 years you know up to march 2021 and isko dekh ke shayad hi kuch log honge who will get very excited that yes you know we want to analyze this company uh, more because we can see there is a huge loss there are huge losses in fy 19 and 20 right so uh but what if i present to you another layer of evidence on top of this what if i showed you the net profits from 2016 to september 2022 so extra 18 months maybe now some of you are at least curious ki you know maybe uh, i want to at least know a little bit more right and i think any logical person any analyst if you would look at this graph if you were to start from this point we would be asking ourselves two very fundamental questions the first question is that why are there such huge losses in 2019 and 2020 and b there is a sharp uptick or sharp increase in the net profits in the last 18 months is this sustainable at least over the next few years right so in order to answer question number 1 ki why are there losses i think logically we all understand ki agar loss hua it means that the expenses were higher in these two years versus the income right i think very logical but then the question is that what exact which types of expenses actually caused these losses right and for this company there are three major categories of expenses and this is your first hint your first uh, um, evidence to guess which sector this company is from so the three types of expenses are a interest expense b operating expenses and c provisioning expenses right so these are three major expenses now before we get on to actually analyzing each of these expenses i have a very simple request if you like anything about this video please feel free you know dil khol ke please uh, feel free to click on the like button and b uh, please consider subscribing because you know mera ek chhota channel hai as you can see and for me each and every single subscriber you know matters a lot it gives me a lot of energy to continue making these kinds of videos right so with that said let's get started and analyze this business so first let's analyze the interest expense right on your screen you should be able to see a graph jahan pe hum compare kar rahe hain total income versus the interest expense total income in blue and interest expense in red right and these numbers are in 1000 crores right or simply crores so what we can see here is there is nothing out of the ordinary interest expense is increasing very much in the same proportion uh, as the total income in fact kuch positive hi ho raha hai yahan pe nothing negative we can see right uh, 2021 and 2022 do saalon mein the interest expense has actually declined versus the total income so that's something positive right so at least on the interest expense level we don't see uh, that that uh that to be the cause of losses for fy19 or 20 but if you look at uh, the second expense now operating expense immediately from the graph on your screen it becomes very very obvious your yellow column hai which is the operating expenses it has gone up sharply between 18 and 19 and even from 19 onwards it has stayed at very much the higher elevated level right so it has gone up from 1600 or 16 16 to 1800 crores in 2018 to nearly 48 4900 crores in just one year and actually if you add those two expenses uh in fy19 which is the interest expenses expenses kareeb kareeb 8000 crore and then the operating expenses 5000 crores which comes to 13000 crores right that is much more or that is more than the total income of around 12000 crores right so we can see that operating expenses contributed majorly to the loss in financial year 2019 but 
वी स्टिल कैनॉट से दैट ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंसिस की वजह से लॉस हुआ था एफ वाई ट्वेंटी में भी राइट बिकॉज अगेन इफ यू एड दिस टू एक्सपेंसिज दे स्टिल लोअर दैन द टोटल इनकम विच मीन्स दैट वॉज नॉट द फैक्टर बिहाइंड द लॉस सो लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द थर्ड मेजर टाइप ऑफ एक्सपेंस विच इज द प्रोविजनिंग एक्सपेंस राइट नाउ बिफोर आई शो यू द ग्राफ लॉट ऑफ पीपल मस्ट बी वंडरिंग की प्रोविजनिंग एक्सपेंस है क्या right for people who might not be familiar with this type of expense i don't want to give too much of details because again this, this if i tell you what it is it's it's the biggest hint about what industry this company is from so i'll stay I abstain from telling you for at least you know a couple more minutes um so if you look at this graph which shows the provisioning expense it becomes very obvious that you know uh 2020 may there was a huge increase in huge and sharp sudden increase in provisioning expense and that clearly contributes to the losses now in front of us based on the analysis of these major expenses we have three questions now right three more very interesting questions which is one ye jo operating expenses increase hue hain is company ke liye right from fy19 onwards why that happened right how long will these expenses stay at those levels question number 2 is ki 2020 mein jo provisioning expense increase hua why that happened right what are the chances that as a expense future may be aa sakta hai and question number 3 the key question i think as related to future growth which is ki kya ye jo profit increase hai which we are seeing in the last you know one and a half two years is this sustainable at least for the next 3 years right so to answer these three questions we're actually going to uh, go deeper into the analysis in the next section so to answer these questions we'll continue with the analysis and what we'll do is we'll break down the remaining video into two different parts in the first part we'll discuss the core business analysis and in the second part we'll talk about the investment thesis and the risks associated with the investment thesis now just as a disclaimer I want to make it very clear that I am not invested in this company in this stock and in fact the whole idea was not even to discuss the stock but to uh share how the thought process works right so that at least for the viewer you can use similar kinds of thought processes to uh apply to you know similar stocks similar businesses so having said that let's start off with the core business analysis now if you haven't already guessed uh ye jo stock hai business hai this belongs to the banking and or nbfc sector i still won't say which one but you know it's from the financial uh financial space so a financial business we usually break down into three different parts because these are the three major functions uh for a financial business pehla hai ki they have to raise money because you know money is the raw material with which they can actually you know लैंड टू अदर पीपल तो पहला रेज मनी दूसरा लैंड मनी एंड तीसरा बिटवीन दिस रेजिंग एंड लैंडिंग यू नो दे ट्राई टू मेक मनी सो दीज आर थ्री फंक्शन इन अ मोर टेक्निकल लैंग्वेज रेजिंग मनी इज यूजली कंसिडर्ड द लाइबिलिटी साइड द लैंडिंग इज कंसिडर्ड और कॉल द एसेट साइड एंड द थर्ड वन इज बेसिकली द प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी यू नो ऑफ द बैंक सो लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द लाइबिलिटीज साइड ऑफ थिंग्स so just to give you some context this new entity was formed from the merger of an existing bank and an existing nbfc ye jo existing bank tha it was mainly focusing on infrastructure loans right which are large chunky loans now the management somewhere around 2015 2016 decided that it wanted to shift its focus from infra lending towards retail lending why did it do that there are a couple of reasons pehla reason hai ki the whole infrastructure lending cycle was going through a big downturn why it happened what were the circumstances how it happened all of that is beautifully explained in the book uh, bad money by dr vivek all i strongly recommend you check that out the second reason is that because these infra loans uh, infrastructure loans are large and chunky in nature one failure one corporate failure can cause huge losses for the bank obviously that's not very attractive. active and compare this to retail loans where the risk so to speak is distributed amongst millions of borrowers right so that was another attraction and the third is that retail loans may you earn higher interest rates uh, meaning higher yields 
which means at higher profits for the bank or the lender, which is again attractive. Also, around the time the NPAs and even now to an extent, the NPAs in the retail lending uh, segment were much, much lower compared to the infra corporate and project financing. Right. So combine all of these reasons, uh, the management decided to shift its strategy. And as a part of this shift in strategy, the bank, the existing bank that we're talking about was looking for a partner that specialized in retail banking or retail financing. Around the same time, this NBFC, which was highly specialized in retail lending, was looking for a banking partner so that it could raise money from the public. Now, why was it so important for this NBFC to raise money from public? Well, it's very simple. So by virtue of being a bank, uh, you have the privilege of taking money you know, from the public in the form of, say, current accounts, savings accounts, term deposits. And these are much cheaper forms of borrowing related to or compared to, let's say, the bond market or borrowing from other institutions or other banks, which was what this NBFC was having to do before the merger. So when they merged, when these entities merged in December 2018, the total loan book of the merged entity was around 1 lakh crore and uh, the public deposits were barely 10,000 crore. So the first order of business for the new management, right? And by the way, merged entity ke jo CEO or MD hai, he was also the CEO and MD of the NBFC. So he became the CEO of the new uh, entity. And the first order of business for, for you know the team was to set up this liability engine, this engine or these resources that could take money from the public. But now the question is, how do you actually do that? Well, this requires setting up branches, investing in the digital infrastructure, hiring staff, etc., etc. Right? And basically, it means spending a lot of money initially and getting the results much later on and these expenses are categorized on the income statement as uh, operating expenses and that's why in FY19 specifically as you can see the operating expenses shot up and have kind of remained elevated on the level so while there are no losses on the bank level if we actually look at the branches because these branches most of these branches are actually less than two three years old they're still loss making and this is a very key point to uh, keep in mind uh, why it will become clear as we go on with the analysis but branches on on the branch level these branches are still loss making at least most of them right but because of these investments right what has happened is that public deposits have increased from 15000 crores 10000 15000 to nearly 1 lakh 15000 crores today as on september 2022 Right. Uh, also, branches have increased from 206 branches in December 2018 to nearly 670 branches. ATMs have increased from around 140 to nearly 812 ATMs as on September 2022. Right. And as as we talk, because of this, you know, bank has been able to raise nearly 10 times more public deposits. And because of this, the cost of funds, which was the whole reason why the bank wanted to invest in uh, branches, etc cost of funds has reduced from nearly 8, 8.8% down to 5.5%. So if you go one layer deeper and analyze the composition or the breakup of the overall public deposits, uh, one of the key parameters we can analyze is the CASA ratio, current account saving accounts as a percentage of the overall deposits. And this has really remarkably shot up for this bank from 11% in 2019 to nearly uh, 51% in September 2022. But there's a catch uh, 22 kind of situation to this, uh, you know, to this result, uh, which is that the whole idea of having a higher CASA is that the cost will be lower. But in this case, as a bank's, as the bank's strategy, what they have done is they actually increased uh, the rates on the savings accounts, uh, uh, saving deposits a lot higher uh, than most the, the average rates for most of the big banks, right? So, uh, it kind of defeats the whole point of having a higher a higher CASA ratio. But from the bank's perspective, it makes sense because the bank is saying that we are a relatively uh, newer retail bank, right? So as we uh, attract more and more people to keep their money, we will work on those relationships and we'll be able to cross sell uh, and build on those relationships by selling them other products, giving them other types of loans, right? So that's the bank's pers uh, kind of uh, perspective, right? But what 
the with the casa ratio what we will we'll find out with time as the rates are lowered or normalized to some extent whether casa ratio still remains uh, high to that extent and whether people will still prefer to keep the money with this bank when rates are sort of let's say uh, the same as uh, most of the other large mid sized banks right so that's something that story is still unfolding and we'll find out as that goes along so to conclude on the liability side we have very clearly found out that fy19 which was lost tha why that happened right it was because of investment in branches because of that operating cost went up and uh, that's why the loss in fy19 but we still don't know the second the answer to the second key question which is fy20 mein jo provisioning ki wajah se loss hua tha why did that happen is that a one time thing or it can happen again in the future so to explore that let's go deeper into the asset side of things the loan side of things so if you go back to december 2018 again when the merger happened uh, the loan book composition or the total break up of the types of loans was something like this so infrastructure and corporate loans accounted for 50 55% of the total loans 35% of the loans were retail loans and the new management had set two primary goals over the next 5 6 years sabse pehla tha ki they wanted to increase the retail loans as a percentage of overall loan book from 35% to over 70 75 uh, 70 75% which means uh, growing uh, the retail loans from 36000 crores to over 1 lakh crores in the next 5 6 years simultaneously it also had to remove uh, the part of the loans uh, the book that was causing the issues which was the infrastructure lending segment so it wanted to reduce that to almost uh, close to negligible and then another part of the large chunky loans portfolio jo existing legacy uh, portfolio keh sakte hain use Uh, which was corporate loans uh, around 35000 crores of loans it wanted to kind of maintain at that level over the next 5 6 years and depending on how opportunities uh, for corporate lending shaped up right so that was the overall stra- uh, strategy and as you can see from the graph the from march 2019 infrastructure book uh, has reduced dramatically uh, now to nearly 4% from roughly i believe uh, 17% at the time uh the corporate loan book has reduced quite dramatically from 29% to nearly 17% now and most importantly the retail lending the retail book has increased uh to over you know 70 75% which was the target the management had set but as this process of rebuilding the loan book was taking place over the last 4 5 years uh npa issues kind of popped up from time to time in fact the reason why there was a huge loss in fy20 was because provisioning went up provisioning expense is the expense that uh, banks or nbfcs have to take when uh, the loans go bad they have given money and they don't expect to receive those loans back they have to expense that out on from the income statement and if i showed you the npa ratios pre merger meaning pre 2019 and post uh, as at least from the ratios you won't look at and say ki oh there's a, there's a big problem per se but in my humble opinion i don't think the ratios reflect the reality of the situation uh, especially because the large chunk of the book was infrastructure loans corporate loans and i know for sure that there were issues now why it was not showing up on the npa ratios there are a couple of reasons but we don't want to get into them they can be very uh, relatively complicated for now right but specifically if we talk about fy20 provisioning expense increased in one year from you know around 100 120 crores to 4800 crores right 50, 50 times increase right so there were specific events in 2019 that triggered those uh, provisioning expenses to happen and here's what happened so january 2018 may it was announced that this existing bank will merge with an nbfc which is highly specialized in retail bank and obviously the merged entity is what we are discussing so january 18 announcement hui ki merger hoga and the merger actually happened in december 2018 so in 9 mahino mein uh, in sorry in 10 11 mahino ke beech mein actually a very important catalytic event happened which was basically the ilnfs ka crisis so because of the crisis so everybody knew that there is a problem in the infra and corporate loans right but 
इस क्राइसिस की वजह से अ फ्यू इम्पॉर्टेंट चेंजेस हैपन इन द सिस्टम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बैंकर्स बिकेम वेरी फेयरफुल एंड क्रेडिट साइकिल जिसके बारे में हमने काफ़ी डीपली बात की है इन इन अनदर वीडियो विच आई विल लिंक इन द वीडियो समेर अराउंड हेयर यू कैन चेक इट आउट बट बेसिकली द क्रेडिट साइकिल क्या होता है कि वैन बैंकर्स हाउ मच दे आर विलिंग टू लैंड राइट वॉट इज देयर रिस्क काइंड ऑफ परसेप्शन एट द टाइम एंड इस क्राइसिस की वजह से यू नो देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ फियर दैट काइंड ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अ सडन टू कोवर द सिस्टम जिसकी वजह से पहले में भी अ लॉट ऑफ you know banks uh, and mainly the ceos were willing to finance some of these companies that were not necessarily very healthy but because there was fear because ilnfs ke fail hone ki wajah se government stepped in to ekdam se even for senior bankers it became an issue ki ab agar hum uh, weak companies ko finance karte rahe to maybe it can become a very personal issues maybe you know it can become a a, a big issue for them Uh, on an individual level so maybe those are the reasons you know other reasons combined ba- basically banks stopped lending uh, at all and there was a huge liquidity crisis and iski wajah se jo companies already weak thi they were already pushed on the brink so just to give you an idea and this started obviously july to october hua but the real problem at least for this merged bank mid sized bank that we are talking about started to show up in the third quarter uh, roughly around the merger time so as you can see on your screen there is this uh, graph and here we can see that first of all uh, jo march mein uh, march mein there was a big provisioning of 421 crores for reliance capital uh, dhfl ke liye again provisioning li gayi uh 421 but this is the 2019 numbers what we are interested in is the 2020 because that's where that 4800 crores of uh, provisioning expense was there so as you can see 877 crores on behalf of reliance capital uh dhfl you know 75% of exposure uh was was provided for 26 crore or right for dusre quarter mein fy20 ke um एक डिफर्ड टैक्स एसेट्स की वजह से यू नो 750 का सो दिस इज नॉट एन पी रिलेटेड ऑब्वियसली एंड दिस इज डेफिनेटली वन ऑफ राइट देन टुक 50 करोड़ फॉर अ लॉजिस्टिक कंपनी तीसरे क्वार्टर में वी कैन सी 1622 फॉर अ टेलीकॉम एक्सपोजर राइट सो यू नो दैट वाज अ ह्यूज ह्यूज हिट 110 करोड़ ऑल फॉर अ थर्मल पावर प्रोजेक्ट एंड देन फाइनली जब कोविड हिट हुआ इन द फाइनल Uh, final quarter of 2020 uh, we can see again last quarter mein bhi zyada provisioning hai ma- mainly provisioning for covid only accounted for 225 crore so these are all, uh, accounts that or these are loans that went bad uh, primarily because of the catalytic event of ilnfs so now i think we are pretty clear why the losses happened in fy19 why they happened in fy20 and if we talk about the fy20 as we can see a lot of these loans were given pre uh, the merger and i think to some extent to a large extent i would say that these are one of uh you know loans going bad and since then i think there have been a lot of material changes within the organization the biggest one is that you know the whole uh, bank is now uh, more focused on retail loans so any issues that happen will be more on the retail side rather than these large chunky loans so now we've understood the first two core questions the third one which is that this recent sharp increase in the net profits over the last 6 months specifically right is that expected to continue over the next 2 3 years at least and can profits grow at let's say 20% or more right in order to answer that question really what we need to know is what are the drivers of profit right and ultimately even more importantly we need to know what is driving roa and roe right so just to get a basic sense of you know how the market or analysts or the investing community uh re-rates or evaluates these kind of businesses it depends on the profitability ratios roa and roe and to establish some basic benchmarks 
there is an unsaid understanding that for a bank a 15% ROE is considered to be a respectful threshold and uh, the ROA should be 1% for an NBFC usually they're able to earn a higher ROA and ROE we would still say the ROA would be 15% threshold and uh, ROA can be somewhere around 1.25 to 1.5% so the way that the investing community or the market evaluates these stocks is that they track how these profitability ratios are expected to rise or fall. Now, naturally, if they're expected to rise, right, chances are that there will be an, a re-rating in the stock. And that's one part of where investors can potentially make their money, right? In order to understand how these ROA and ROE ratios move, we need to understand this concept of ROA tree. And in one of our videos, we have in detail talked about the ROA tree with a lot of uh, case studies and examples. And I encourage you to check that out. I'll link it in the video somewhere here. But the concept is that, as you can see on the screen, the ROA, there are three main trigger points or three checkpoints we need to see from where performance is likely to improve or become worse, right? The first one is net interest margin. The second one is cost to income ratio. And the third one is the NPA ratio, right? So these are the things that are, that drive profit and ultimate, uh, ultimately ROA and ROE, right? So for this particular bank, let's have a look at these three key checkpoints. So firstly, if we talk about the net interest margin, which is basically interest earned minus interest paid divided by the total average assets, right? So net interest margin, because it's a function of the interest earned and interest paid, uh, we can very clearly see that over the last four or five years, what has happened is that as this bank is giving out more retail loans at a higher interest yield, right? Uh, and at the same time, as its cost of borrowing is decreasing, this gap, this net interest margin has increased quite a bit. And there is sufficient, in fact, a lot of improvement since the merger happened in 2018, right? So in my humble opinion, I don't think there is much room for improvement on the net interest margin side. And I think uh, this uh, level of around 6% in September 2022, that's where the net interest margins were. I think this is probably on the higher or the max threshold for the bank. Um, the second uh, ratio we want to uh, analyze is the cost to income ratio. Now, this I think is the biggest opportunity or this is where most of uh, the upside uh, eventually in the profit is going to come from let's understand how and why right so first of all uh, there are three key triggers uh, within the cost side of this uh, bank where as these costs get reduced right that all of that is going to come straight to the profit right basically this is called operating leverage and those three sources are or those three triggers are first of all legacy long-term bonds so as we discussed previously uh, you know the bank was mainly an infrastructure lending institution and it used to borrow uh, for the long term because these types of loans are you know very long term so you can't really take money from the public and give it for like 10 years or 15 years right and for this reason they used to borrow from other institutions and these borrowings worth nearly which are currently with the bank remaining with the bank worth nearly 26 27000 crores they are still the bank is still paying an average 8.8 percent which is right maybe like three and a half four percent more than the rate at which it can now borrow from the public in the form of you know uh, current account savings account, uh, saving accounts term deposit all of that so this is bound to come down and that extra three and a half percent of savings is what the bank will get straight to the bottom line so that's the number one trigger and if we calculate on a 27,000 crore legacy borrowing that's left uh, currently paying 8.8% at 5.5%, the bank will uh, save around 1200 crores per year, right? So that's the first source of uh, uh, increased profits. The second source is the credit card business. So the bank recently over the last one and a half, two years launched the credit card business and the way the credit card business works, just like, uh, you know, the branches uh, is that initially there is a high upfront investment and the results come uh, with time. So right now, uh, the, the bank is making a loss on the credit card business of around, 
you know, roughly 200, 250 crores, thereabouts in that vicinity uh, per year, right? So as this business grows, of course, this business is not going to be loss making forever, right? So at some point, the necessary scale will be achieved as more and more credit cards are dispersed and there's more spends and more earnings for the bank. And this loss will, you know, when it breaks, even the bank will have an extra 250 to 300 crores. The third source are the branches themselves. You remember, we discussed how the branches as a whole are still loss making and because these are relatively new branches they haven't broken even so of course again as these branches mature they're going to become they're at least and again we're assuming with all of these three key triggers that the bank just has to break even right we're not even talking about the extra profitability or whatever from these businesses so as the branches break even uh, the bank is expected to save roughly around uh, 500 crores or thereabouts so total if we add all the three triggers right and this is just to break even uh, if you add those three triggers uh, the bank will be having roughly around 2000 crores to the bottom line after tax we can say roughly around 15 1600 crores right so that is a significant significant chunk that is going to the bottom line to the profit so i think there are huge uh, triggers in place that can help the bank earn a higher profit. So these three operating leverage triggers are expected to play out over the two, three years. So this entire 1500 crore is not going to come in the next year. Uh, maybe let's say if it's 1500 crore, we, we're expecting around 500 to 700 crore to kind of come to the bottom line uh, over the next three years. And then after the third year from today, then you're going to see the full impact on the bottom line, right? But this is just, again, um, I'm repeating, this is just from breaking even. These triggers are likely to play out right sooner or later but we haven't even talked about the growth side of things right which is where the majority of the growth in profit should come from so as you know the bank has been for three years the bank has barely grown its loan book because again it was growing its retail book from 30,000 crores to 1 lakh crores at the same time it was uh, you know decreasing its infrastructure loans from you know around 50 55 60,000 crores to now 2025 right so combine these two impacts the overall loan book has not really uh, grown but now the fundamentals of the bank are in place and I think they're ready for the next phase of this growth. So a bulk of the growth is likely to happen from just growing the overall book, right? So these are the reasons why we think some good things can happen for this bank over the next two, three years or longer. Uh, but of course, there are risks and I think we need to address and understand those risks very clearly. So in my humble opinion, I think uh, I would say there are three major sources of risk. The first risk is that this is a very aggressive type of lender. We know this because a, uh, it is very retail focused and there are a lot of advantages to retail lending, of course. But uh, one of the ways, uh, one of the metrics or one of the data points that tell us that this is an aggressive lender is that uh, they are lending at an average yield of 15%. Right. And at the same time, they are claiming or uh, they believe uh, the bank's management believe that they'll be able to keep the NPA ratios around 2%. Right. And the way they try to project their point of view or show their point of view to the investing community is by showing their past results, uh, which again, I mean, they're, they're very respectable, no doubt. Uh, but they're saying that, hey, look, since we started this NBFC in 2010, uh, we have a very good record and therefore we'll be able to continue keep doing that. I think there is some power to that. But again, it is my uh, opinion, I think. And it'll be interesting to see how this actually plays out because that's the whole point of making these videos uh, to have a thought process and then to judge or uh, compare that thought process with reality as reality unfolds. So it'll be interesting to see this maybe one year, two years down the line. But in my humble opinion, I think that if you're lending at 15%, that is definitely on the higher side and you're definitely taking risk, right? From 15% lending rate, you're saying you'll keep 2% NPA ratios. It's a little bit, um, it's not easy to believe. And uh, so that's my opinion. So that's the major source of risk. And I still have not been able to kind of figure this out or have an opinion around how this will play out. 
The second major source of risk is obviously our operating leverage, which we are talking that maybe two, three years down the line, it'll add around 15 to 1700 crores to the bottom line just from cost savings, not even the business growing, nothing at all. Um, so the risk here is obviously that things might not play out as fast as we are hoping, which is in the next two, three years. Maybe it'll be longer, but there's a very high probability, again, in my humble opinion, that these uh, triggers will play out, right? Uh, how fast they will play out will actually be uh, more uh, helpful in the re-rating of the stock because if let's say the entire 15, 1700 of cost savings show up in two years instead of three, it means the profit will jump uh, a bit more sharply and therefore uh, it's likely that the market will re-evaluate its uh, opinion and therefore, you know, the stock chances are that you might make money on your investment much faster. Uh, or maybe on the on the flip side, this could happen a lot slower where the impact might not be as uh, big or meaningful as we are thinking. The third major risk is that uh, the company at least recently has had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, dilution in the equity. So they end up because they need money for growth, they end up diluting, uh, raising money from investors and therefore the existing shareholders, their money is has been diluted to a significant again, uh, amount and again they have plans to raise 4000 crores which on a net worth of around 22 23000 crores equals to a dilution of 18 to 20 percent so over the next one year again there is this uh, negative overhang that if they raise money from the market 4000 crores if they raise you know yeah, existing shareholders are going to suffer but again the net effect uh, we'll see how this plays out I think that's the whole idea. Uh, I would say there's another source of risk, which is the unknown. Like we don't really know what we don't know. Uh, I'm only sharing what I'm aware of at the moment uh, through these, we can say, video notes. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I hope this video has been helpful. I know this is probably very long, but I hope it has been insightful. If you're still watching, please, please, please consider subscribing. It's, um, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it's also a lot of hard work. So it would be really, really would mean a lot if, uh, if you subscribe and uh, share it with other people. So thank you so much for watching.